Hey guys, this is Mel, and I'm back to talk to you about Legacies, episodes 212, titled Kai Parker Screwed Us, which premiered Thursday, February 6, 2020 on The CW. Hey guys, this is an episode I've been waiting a long time, ever since they announced that Chris Wood would be back as Kai Parker, so I'm so excited for this. I am recording the exact same night, it is 10.35 for me right now, so just just under an hour since the episode has ended. So huge spoiler alert, if you haven't seen the episode already, please go do so first, and then come back and see what I have to say about the episode. Um, otherwise, my, my other video reminders are up on screen, so take a moment to remind yourselves of those. I'm gonna try to do this in 20 minutes. So st let's start this clock, and let's begin with what happened in this episode. So first off, the episode quote, Kai Parker Screwed Us, was said by Wendy to Diego. Wendy being one of the witch students that were imprisoned in the prison world and diego is the werewolf student that was imprisoned there as well with her so that's a little something there i'll talk about a little bit more about them in a moment a uh, timeline of the episode interesting enough this actually continues from where 210 left off and that is because this episode is strictly taking place in the prison world so while last week's episode 211 dealt with um the next day after the events of 210 dealing with strictly what's happening at the school we have it now being in the present world kind of this is what happened concurrently with what was happening with the students in 211 so that's a little something there um but yeah and also as we know time does move differently in the prison world itself so we don't know if it's actually still been a day for them as well uh what have you um so there's that episode reminder again kai parker it's in the title itself there's no way you could for you could not know that it's him it's like the hugest spoiler right there but again a good identifier as well um feature creature of the episode i'm not really going to include one because usually i reserve this for the malivore creatures but i guess you can kind of say that it's all three factions that are an issue we have a ripper vampire we have a witch we have a werewolf and then we got a heretic which is a, a siphon witch that got turned into a vampire and now it's a full fledged vampire witch hybrid which is kai um so that's pretty much it so it's basically our core creatures of the the, the vampire diaries trilogy that we have so pretty much for the episode breakdown or the storylines i'm going to go into three of them first one or i'm going to briefly recap three of them first one being finding an escape Second one being Private Paradise. And the third one, I'm just going to deal with the flashbacks that occurred 10 years ago. Um, and that will be brief, but it is important to this story. So the first storyline is pretty much dealing with finding an escape from the prison world. This is where we get Kai and Josie kind of crossing and double crossing each other to try to find a way to get out of the prison world. And ultimately, it is through Josie's tales about Malivore that Kai found a way to use the Malivore pit to escape into the real world um and then josie finds out that she needs to break the sand clock to acquire enough power to create her own doorway out of there so that's something there second storyline we do see sebastian taking lizzie way to experience a perfect day i think he took her to he took her somewhere outside of mystic falls but it really looks like it could have been either the lockwood mansion the founders hall or it could have been even the michaelson the klaus's mansion that he created in mystic falls like it really looked very similar. It was like deja vu having her step through those those halls. Unless like all those old school homes were supposed to be in similar structure. But it was like so many vibes right there. They were also dancing like it was like old school um, dances. I thought it was the waltz. I could be very wrong. But it had me very reminiscent of like the Mystic Falls pageant of like the welcoming ball that happened in season three of the vampire dies i think it was 314 where caroline and klaus had that dance when they were welcoming the whole, the whole michelson family so there's that we also found out that while sebastian is bound to the prison world he won't age or die um like kai is bound to that world but lizzie would if she were to stay there so she would still age and she would still die so she all that issue would go as well um we do also find out that because he wanted to protect her he fed he secretly fed her his blood so yeah that that causes a whole slew of things in a moment i'll bring up but the flashback part of the episode 10 years ago we find out just why these three students were sentenced to the prison world and this is the one um regret that or one mistake that alark made he now claims that he should have just killed them instead of um uh, granting them mercy by having them put in the prison world um so that is something there we do find out that again it's the same day playing itself out all over again 
back in 2018, as you remember. Yeah, and it, it happens on the night of a celestial event as well, too, which I'll bring up in characters in a moment because it is a crucial tidbit. Just keep that in mind. So last in the episode is a huge one. This episode really landed us, landed us in a huge cliffhanger that I really wasn't expecting. So first off, the last scene truly is Kai meeting the necromancer as he exits out of the Malivore portal. He is covered in that goo and he's alive and free again, which is super terrifying because like, it's like, wow, it's like, I was not expecting that at all. I literally thought that he would still be stuck in the prison world, but I will get back to that in questions later on, but that's where we left it off. Just before that scene happened, we saw Lizzie getting in a car accident while having Sebastian's blood in her system. So her fate is still left up in the air, whether or not she survives as a human or if she ended up dying and then came back as a vampire. So that's something there. That car crash resulted because Josie just, she smashed the sand clock and absorbed all that dark magic, which I guess kind of caused her to faint. But then because of her reaction to the dark magic, Lizzie seemed to have a reaction to it too. Not to maybe the extent of her absorbing it, but as you know, if when Josie was dabbling in the dark magic, whatever physical effects she had from it, Josie would, or Lizzie would also have the same effects even though she didn't actually do dark magic. So they, the twins were definitely experiencing something there which led to the crash. And then before that, we saw Alaric just gearing up to face off against the detention trio that were out to kill him for revenge. So that's something there. Now let's move into characters very quickly. Kai Parker. Is there really any more I, sh I can say about him? Because like one thing I will say though. I am so glad he was like heavily featured in the episode. As it, wanted, it wasn't just like a cameo one scene appearance for him. He was like full on fledged featured here. Um, so it was just really great to see. Not only what it's been like for him for the last. Well 16 years for him technically. 13, 6, 13 years, it has to be 13 years, what it's been like for 13 years for him being stuck in that world, what it's been like for the last 10 years since the detention trio got there, um, because they're the ones that set him free from his uh, desiccated um, chair prison, um, so that's something there, um, he also was getting caught up, like, he explained how he, it was like his own version of the Hunger Games, um, so being hunted down and everything, I mean, all four of them pretty much hunted each other down for fun, but yeah. So anyways, we'll move on to that. Sebastian, he claims that he doesn't want to leave the prison world because it's literally the world, all the world for him, and he wants Lizzie to stay with him. Unfortunately, after he mistakes her as Cassandra, she kind of decides we need to see new people. She siphons magic out of Sebastian, which desiccates him and powers her enough, essentially. So that is something there. Now, Jade is the vampire detention student that we get to see. We find out that she's a Ripper vampire. We find out what happened the night of um, the, uh, I guess, their their big crime that led them there. And it turned out that she was on her way of being a, a med student. She wanted to help people. And it in the altercation that happened, the bloodlust got too much. And she found out she was a Ripper to the point that she did what Rippers did. And so consumed by the, the shame and the guilt from it all, she turned off her humanity. So, which resulted in her not showing any remorse to Alaric when he asked. So that was Jade. Then we get Diego, who is the werewolf that was sentenced to the prison world. Now we find out that because the prison world kept recycling the same day over and over again, it ended up being a full moon that kept recycling. So for Diego, for the past 10 years, he's had experience of full moon every single day and that so that's 10 years times roughly 365 days so that was 3650 full moons he's had to deal with and let's see what that equates to divide that by 12 because i'm assuming you'd get at least one full moon every month that's that's 304 years worth of full moons that's insane so yeah, naturally you can see after having so, and also in the flashback, it showed how much having every bone in his body break, like scare him and stuff. And then to have him actually relive that fear over and over again every day for the next 10 years, that's also traumatizing. Of course, he'd want to get revenge, but also that means he is now able to fully control his transformation as if he were a vampire human hybrid or vampire werewolf hybrid, not human hybrid, crap. Vampire werewolf hybrid. So like Klaus or like Haley or like Hope. 
or technically Hope's not that level of hybrid yet, but with Klaus and Haley, um, and then later her um, her Crescent Pack um, after the unification ritual, they were able to partially transform into their werewolf features at any given moment outside of the full moon. But because of Diego, he can now fully, or I guess partially transform, because fully transformed would actually be him as a wolf on four legs. But instead, it was him being like, like the old school werewolf, where it's like just a man with very fur, very furry uh, skin and like uh, canine teeth and all that. So he like, it explained why he was able to only go through that partial transformation, because then also it would be a lot better than just putting a CGI wolf in to attack Rick, um, but 304 years worth of full moons. Yikes. That didn't hit me until I just did the calculation. Wow. And then you got Wendy, who was the witch. Now, based off the flashback, her only crime was pretty much accidentally burning someone to death when they tried to call 911 to get help. And it just seemed like more of like, it was an out of, con- magic. her magic was out of control. Like there was no, it was very accidental and she seemed horrified by it. But it was Diego who started the whole altercation begin. He went and ripped out that the bully's arm out and he wasn't stopping. Granted, the bully threw a football at him, but then that doesn't really that doesn't really call for them to get their 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 arm ripped out. I would expect it like a punch, maybe. But yeah, so I we'll talk about Wendy later though. But um that's what we find out from her from there. Also that um she is known for having a fire ability. So that might be something that's not always, like, not every witch is, like, able to control. So that's something there. Let's move on to tidbits, though, very quickly. Let me get out of my calculator also, too. So based on, so first off, because we're in the prison world, that means that Hope and the other students are not featured. This is actually making it the first episode that Hope's not featured in any way, shape, or form. And that also means that there's not one character in the cast that has been present in every single episode now. After Lark's episode in the previous episode, it left Hope with that that title. And now that she wasn't in this episode, none of them have that title. So that's that was a shock for me there. I was expecting that we would see Hope in some way, shape, or form in this episode to kind of count for her absent, for uh, count as an appearance. But they didn't do that, so that was a surprise there. Um, that's really the only tidbit I have. They didn't really touch upon the, the, the riddle at all, so I won't feature that. But it is... It, it does get brought up in the next episode, which we will talk about in predictions. So let's move on to the most shocking moment of the episode. Now, in the promo, we do see Alaric get chained up, and everyone assumes, I definitely assume, that Kai is the one that did it, and he was using Alaric as leverage to get Josie to become the monster just like him. But I was surprised that it was actually Josie that locked up Alaric. I was surprised she would do that. And it just seemed like, yeah... Like, I get why she did it, because she didn't want Lark to stand in her way of trying to find a way to get her out, get all of them out. But then at the same time, it's like, no, you're, fa- like, you're willing to work with the, with Kai, who pretty much killed your mom and then your entire coven, and he pretty much tortured your dad and everything, and you want to willingly help with him and ignore all the warnings your father has against him? I was a little shocked that she risked that. At times, I was like, "What girl, what are you thinking? But then at times, she's like, oh, you, you're, you're learning, as Kai put it. So it's just like, it was a huge shock that she was the one behind chaining a lark up. So that was like, wow. And moving on to top three favorite moments. Huge favorite is the fact that Kai's back. He's like the villain you love to hate. I mean, he's, you definitely do not want him to win at all. But then his presence is just so unpredictable that like, even if he shows you being nice, I can never tell if like, are you genuinely being nice? Or are you just playing a game with me right now to make me think you're being nice to draw my guard? Like, you know what I mean? Like those kind of like, I can't fully trust you, but you're showing me signs that maybe I can. But then I got to think maybe I can't. So it's just like weird mind games with him. But I love it because it's just so Kai. And it just seems like yesterday that that he was on my TV screen when it's really, he hasn't been back since like season eight of the Vampire Diaries, which was like, what, three, three years ago? Yeah. Wow. So yeah, there's that. Also, they brought back his iconic video message habit. Um, and also with that video message, he name drops Bonnie, Catherine, Damon. He, he, 
he talks about his sister, his own Gemini coven family. He brings a lot of Vampire Diaries references with him, which I love because then it just further, like, like Legacies is good in bringing up previous characters if they have like a certain position to play or like they brought previous knowledge off screen to them. I love that. But the fact that he just name dropped all these people, I was just like, yes. I needed that reminder because then it also just meant that they're constantly on his mind as well too. They're not just like a, for, a forgetting name, like, oh, a forgetful face type of thing. So that was something there. His karaoke as well too, that just seemed so him. And I was just like, wow. I enjoyed that. Even though he sucks at singing, I can't judge because like he brings the confidence and it's just like, that's so him though like you know what I mean and then just the attitude itself where it's like the snark and the the witty com the comebacks and like his insult his compliments hidden in insults and vice versa it's just like it's I don't know how else to say that it's him like down to the t like I know it's sometimes it's a little there's always a little worry if a show, if a character from another show is coming in and you're not quite sure if the writing is going to capture them properly. But with this type of situation, you would hope so because it's still the same show creator. And they knocked it out of the park for sure. So I'll leave it at that. Kai has a huge favor for me in this episode. And he really shouldn't because he's the bad guy, but because I guess he's not always on the show and it's been a while, that's why he's a favorite for this. Another favorite I did have was between Lizzie and Sebastian. I just... Their whole, like, perfect day together. One, it seemed too good to be true at times where I'm like, no, I want to get them to go back to Kai. I want to get as much Kai as I want if I only get the one episode with him. Which, surprise, in predictions, I'll leave it at that. But then also just to get, like, it was very reminiscent between them. Unlike the feeling I had. So it was brought back a lot of Vampire Diaries vibes for me. Especially with, like, the whole pageant dancing that they were doing. The reminders of like 314, the fact that Lizzie was wearing a blue dress. Not the same blue dress, but still a blue dress. And they were dancing around the 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 hall. The fact that she walked down the, the, the spiraling staircase as if it was the Mystic Falls pageant. It was just so reminiscent of those episodes from the first show that it was just, it made it more, it made it more enjoyable too. To kind of see that era. Plus also essentially it kind of goes back to a time for Sebastian. Where he wasn't desiccated essentially. So it's just like it was it was pretty cool. And then also for them just to have a moment together. It kind of got ruined when he told her that like. He put his vampire blood in her drink. Like he spiked it. That's when it went sideways. But I did like how their day was going. And then I also loved the conversation that they brought it about when he suggested turning her into a vampire. And she gave a very mature answer saying that how like I've thought about being a vampire. But then I'm not in a position in my life where I can make that decision. There's like she already knew that if I were to become a vampire then I can't have kids. I, I can't grow old with somebody. And she even says like I'm not in a position in my life where I would know if I'd want those things in my life or not. Because again she's only 16. So I thought that was a very mature answer from Lizzie. And I was very proud of that because it just shows how much thought she had put to it. And she even said that turning into a vampire would solve their whole merge problem that they them as the twins were dealing with so it it definitely shows that even though we haven't had it talked about on the show before this like the whole vampire option at least the show that she has thought about it and like there's reasons why she would want to and then but there's also reasons why she's not ready to be able to make that um eternal decision you know what i mean so i thought that was very grown of her to do so that is something there um and then moving on to my last favorite was just a lark going back to his habit of being the vampire hunter going seeing him go around the boarding school and getting out all his hidden weapons and where he stashed them or is it the boarding school because it really reminds me of like the vampire diaries version of it as opposed to the school version or maybe it's because the fact that there's no other students there and that's why i can't recognize it as the school setting but anyways, I, I digress. But I really love that we got to see him just going back. To, like, he didn't have to, like, go searching. Okay, where did I put the weapons? He knew exactly where he stashed those things. So that was pretty fun to see him do that. It was also very 
how easy it was for him to just get back into the swing of it, like riding a bike. So it was just like, that was pretty cool. And then also him just going down to the armory and seeing him open that door and just seeing all that stuff that he had found in the Vampire Diaries and just knowing what he needed to grab and just gearing up to having to fight a vampire, a werewolf, and a witch was just like awesome alark right there. So I'll leave it at that. But moving on to top three peeved moments, the only peeve I really had with this episode is that Lizzie did not get a chance to interact with Kai. And I really don't think that she knows or that she even believes that her uncle Kai is actually a threat in this prison world because Sebastian kept telling, putting it in her head that like, there's nobody here. It's just us. You can trust me. Your father has lied when he's been saying like, we're not safe here. So it's like with her already doubting Alaric because he lied about where Sebastian ended up being, um, that might have had her believe in Sebastian's lie about how they were safe and how there was, um, no, uh, there was no other threats there. So I don't even think she realizes or she was even aware that, uh, that her uncle Kai is actually a true threat in this world. Oh, he isn't now after the end of the episode, but I was a little disappointed that she wasn't able to meet him or interact with him. And it was just strictly between Josie and uh, Kai, because there are some similarities between Lizzie and Kai that I think that they would be able to relate on. And it would have just been interesting to see how the, their two personalities would have uh, uh, conflicted with each other. Just to see like on like an experimental basis. And the timer just went off 45 seconds ago. I guess it doesn't go off if it's attached to my phone and it's the headset. So there's a reminder there for next time. Uh, but let's move on to random questions very quickly. I actually had this question like half, like, because as I, t I write the quotes down that I find very uh, memorable or important while I watch the episode. So literally while the episode was watching, I had to write this question down. And it was, does Josie randomly carry Bennett blood with her? Keep in mind that I had this question long before it was revealed that it wasn't Bennett blood. It was actually the little uh, wine bottle that Kai had tossed her previously. But I literally had the question of like, did she randomly just carry the blood? How did she carry the blood? That didn't make any sense to me. But the fact to find out that it was just a cloaking spell to look like the blood when it wasn't. That was smart. So I still kept the question to kind of show like there are questions that pop up in the middle of the episodes that I just write down and I can't forget. So that was one. But here's an actual random question that I have. Is Sebastian even aware of the detention trio or of Kai? I mean, at the end when he was mistakenly calling Lizzie Elizabeth or not Elizabeth, uh, Cassandra, it kind of seemed that you can hear like the noise in the background as if like a war was brewing and maybe like he knew from that. But then also, we don't know how long for Sebastian he's been in the prison world, if he's actually being able to interact with the other four people trapped there. So that was my question there. Another question was, couldn't, since the Malivore pit worked for Kai in his escape, could the same thing be applied to the Saltzman family if they were to escape the prison world as well? Like, if Kai was able to escape through the Malivore pit and go back into the real world, then what is stopping the Saltzman family from doing the exact same thing? Aside from Josie not remembering what Kai had told her. Right. So that's something there. Plus, you got a hand to him. That's pretty smart of him to think that, like, that was an option as well. I guess he'd rather take the risk of being trapped there as opposed to being trapped in the prison world. So, I mean, it paid off, but which we'll talk about later. Uh, next question. Is Lizzie affected by dark Josie. I did talk about this when mentioning their endings specifically, but I'm wondering in the sense that like, d is she somehow changed too in some capacity in regards to Josie becoming dark Josie? Or is it just more of like a feeling like there's something dark in my twin that she feels? Because she did react the way she did, which resulted in her crashing the car. So that's a question there. Um, next question was, was Jade's, in regards to the flashback, and how Alaric was so hell-bent that um, Jade was the owner of that school pen that was in one of the victim's hands. I'm wondering if Alaric was just assuming that it was Jade's or if he was actually having like deductive proof that it was her pin or if he actually had the pin spelled to know that who, which student it belonged to and if that's how he knew. Because then if he was just going off of assumptions and deductive reason like oh this is yours you have like then like okay then i can understand why them being in prison might feel like it it was unjustified but if he had like a magical means to identify no you three were at this crime scene you were entangled with the victim 
and you're just denying it and showing nothing for it, then I can understand why he had why he felt he had no choice but to put them in the prison world. So that's something there. Um, although to be honest, for Jade, I don't get why he didn't just desiccate her and then just leave her like that. Why did he have to send her to a prison world? And then for I mean, Diego would have been the harder one to punish because yeah, he would have been harder to detain as well too. But for for Wendy, you could, as a detainment thing, you could have found a way to take away her powers for a certain amount of time or something like that. Um, I mean, there could have been other ways. But for Jade, for her punishment, he could have easily just desiccated her instead of just throwing her in a prison world. You know what I mean? So there is that. And another question was, why would Alaric send the students to the same prison world that Kai was locked up in? I really don't understand that. I thought, if anything, it would have made more sense to either create a different prison world so, like, there was no ounce of a chance that anyone could interact with Kai and set him free. But to find out that, no, he did send him to the same one is, like, why? I mean, even Kai called him out on it in the video messages. Like, like he even said, like, you're not dumb enough to come back here and to check up on me, are you? I'll put the actual quote up on screen, but that was something. There And my last question, I guess I should have connected it to my previous one, was did Alark's punishment fit the crimes for the d detention trios? I think I mentioned this talking about in characters as well as just in the, the previous two questions. But Wendy's was accidental, so I think she was wrongly imprisoned in the prison world. For Diego's, I can understand why, because he is technically the one who started it. He was the more brutal of the three. Um, so, walking up there made sense but I do agree that locking him there on a full moon that was a tad that was going too far if it ended up being on a non-full moon night then I think Diego might have taken that as a godsend because then he'd never have to turn into a werewolf ever again um but yeah so it's a mix there and then for Jade though as I said I mean Jade had no humanity at that point before her imprisonment, so the fact that either he Alaric should have A, desiccated her, or B, the prison world would have seemed like the only option to do so. But then again, why would you put her in a prison world with a heretic? You you know what I mean? Right? So there is that. Uh, let's move on to predictions very quickly. Based off the promo for 213, we do see Dark Josie, Dark Josie and she has black hair as opposed to Josie's regular brown hair and she's in the prison world and she is communicating with Alark um, and they were on an open road and then it also cuts back to Kai being free at the school and he's the one dealing with Hope Landon and the rest of the students uh, and that was a shock I didn't think that we would be getting Kai for more than an episode I truly thought that this episode that we got today would be the only episode we would get Kai being a part of it but to find out that he's actually in the next episode is a huge shock because when you read the synopsis like i am about to right now it says hope finds herself in a race against the clock as the threat of the prophecy looms and the pressure to rescue the saltsman grows meanwhile alaric's attempt to keep his family safe leads him to make a difficult decision landon josie lizzie Raphael apparently is supposed to appear and mg and caleb are also set to appear there no way does it mention in the synopsis that Kai is still a part of the episode. So the fact that the promo shows that he is actually well, first off, the fact that his cliffhanger ending for this episode implies that he's free and now in cahoots what potentially in cahoots with a necromancer is a huge thing. And then also to find in the promo that he's actually going to be interacting with the rest of the students at the school is another huge surprise. So it's like I'm so for it. I'm also very terrified for our characters but i just can't wait to see what what is kai's goal now there's i mean beforehand we knew that he wanted to take out down the gemini coven he wanted to be the leader and then he wanted to punish them he already did that before he died before he was killed in the season six finale and then he was brought back in season eight and he was doing catherine's bidding so now what is he back for is it just for revenge? Anyone he would want revenge on is now back in the prison world where he left them. So unless he goes out and hunts for every other Vampire Diaries character that did him wrong and he tries to get his revenge, which we definitely won't see on screen, 
what is he truly trying to, what's his next goal going to be? I guess that's what I'm worried about. What does Kai ultimately want right now? And as a heretic, I'm assuming he's the only, I think he's the only heretic in his existence. Because whatever happened to Valerie, last seen in, last seen in season seven of the Vampire Diaries, though she was mentioned to still be alive in season eight. Um, so I guess we'll have to figure out that. But otherwise, guys, that is pretty much it. What did you guys think of this episode? What did you guys like about it? What do you think will happen next? Let me know in the comments down below. Love to hear your own thoughts, theories, and opinions about all that. Also, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and check my other videos if you haven't done so already. If you want, check out my Tumblr page. The link for that is down below. I reblog promos, web clips, quotes, gifs, synopses, news, all that good stuff, all fun in one place. So go check that out. A little behind. I'm still in school. I'm like midway through term two, so please be patient. Um, but yeah, um, I'm also dealing with some personal things right now too. So my mind's a little, if it's not on school, then it's on something else. So I'm even lucky that I'm able to record this while it's still fresh in my head. So there's that. Uh, WordPress, I did mention just now, link down below. Um, otherwise, that is pretty much it, guys. So thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for your patience. I hope you can come back next week to see what they say about the next episode. Because Kai is also in it as well, so you better tune in. And so until then, guys, this is Mel. Wish you all a great day, great week, wherever you are. Bye for now.